What's the point in having a regulation? The point, if it's a worthwhile regulation, should be to frame rules that benefit everyone. Look, uh, Treasury and the New York Fed in particular as institutions are just captured intellectually to some extent by, by Wall Street. I think it's just very hard to get around that. Um, I, in my book, I honest. talk about why, why don't we, why don't Why don't we be honest and say that the Federal Reserve is not just captured by Wall Street, but that the Federal oh, Reserve is, is part of Wall Street and that it's all just one big uh, human centipede where you can't tell the difference where the government ends, where the Federal Reserve begins, and where Wall Street ends and begins. It's just one human centipede. Roy, you, you, I mean, you've been on both sides of this in a way because, you know, you're, a, you're now a foreclosure defense attorney, but you used to work on Wall Street. I think we don't have enough rules that restrict the revolving door between true regulators and investment bankers and, and, and other folks on, on Wall Street. You know, when we were young, we were told that, you know, money could buy not necessarily influence, but but it could buy you the opportunity to speak to your to your elected officials and, and, and get what we would call access. You know, and that was a big thing. Money will buy you access, but it won't actually buy a vote or actually influence legislation. I I, I think today we all know that that's just crap, you know, just crap. And and that and, and that it, it's just not true and that money actually can buy not just influence but it curries influence and as Kate was saying actually can buy entire candidates we're kind of discussing here is slightly different which is this this revolving circle this interplay where they're really not two different things being paid off they're almost the one giant organism does that make sense and that's and that's exactly what it is it's one giant organism and as the banks have grown the five largest banks or six largest banks have grown since the bailout the government has grown in in, in the same proportion and it's just you don't know where one ends and where one begins. And and my feeling is that the banks, the largest banks, need to be broken up. We're not talking about little community banks here. I'm talking about large Wall Street banks that are too big to fail, too big to jail. They need to be broken up. They need to be broken up because their influence over government is such that we don't want, we, we literally are now giving them the equivalent of what Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have, and that is an implicit guarantee by the U.S. taxpayer that they can't fail. So you have that going on. And then you also have going on the idea that we are not going to jail them because they're too big to jail. Just as, as Kate's been saying, the SEC has not, has not gone after them. Uh, the Obama administration, and I can assure you the Romney administration, have both made it very clear that, that, that they have no major interest in going up after them. And it's funny because Romney talks about deregulation. Well, that means we're just going to let the banks completely run amok, okay? What we need here is we need to break the banks up just like we did with FDR, just like we broke up the trust, just like we broke up the steel industry, just like we broke up the oil industry. You need people who understand the industry, who've worked in the industry in order to regulate it. But on the other hand, are they also beholden to the industry? Do you want people who have no experience? I, 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 have, I have two points. One is if you have people with a ton of experience, they get involved with the weeds instead of the 30,000 foot uh, image. And sometimes you want people who, who aren't uh, beholden to the industry and are familiar with, with, with the industry to, to be looking at things a little bit from a removed perspective. The second point is, is that if you have someone who's a regulator in a particular industry for too long, that is when this notion of regulatory capture really kicks in. And that you really need to have a civil service system that, that forces people to rotate out of of, of, of the type of, of regulation that they're supposed to be involved with. For example, the whole Madoff crisis with the SEC, it's clear that the people who were looking over Madoff were way, way, way too cushy with folks in the Madoff operation. And, and there's been lots of stuff written on it, so I'm not gonna bore everyone. But the reality is, had we been moving people around quicker in the SEC, uh, Madoff's situation would have been blown years and years and years ago. You, you can't have a large, banking industry that, that effectively is, is larger than, than most countries in the world, uh, where the government itself feels that it doesn't have the resources to properly rein in the industry because that industry has, has set themselves up as, as too big to fail and too big to be regulated or, or too big to be jailed. You need to have that robust kind of regulatory process if you're going to have banks that are likely going to be pulling the strings of your government. Uh, I mean, the fact that, that they can borrow, and I'm just talking about the largest banks, money that is basically at zero percent interest, and then they can turn around and buy treasuries at one percent, which means they're basically printing money, these banks, just shows how everyone in this cycle is, is literally just at the trough, except the taxpayer. The, the reality is that increasingly, 
uh, the industries have more and more control over the regulatory functions and the regulatory bodies. Wendell makes a good point, and that is that when we are watching the the uh, both conventions right now, there's this notion that that capitalism, in its purest form, is is the, the greatest engine for for creating an economy. What we don't talk about is this crony capitalism, the, the type of of nefarious influence that that money has on on the capture process of regulators and the amount of money that Kate is talking about that directly influence the legislative process. And when you have those two forces acting upon our capitalist structure, we have crony capitalism that's that's no better than any banana republic in the third world. What I was going to say is is that part of this whole capture process, and and uh, maybe this won't be politically correct, but I'm going to say it also, and, and I think Clinton uh, alluded to it last night, is that when you have unbridled entitlements, that becomes a form of capture also, because the, in, the individuals who then are receiving these entitlements also are going to influence the political process. And so, yes, if you had this Medicare for all, I mean, doctors would be able to have people come to their do their 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 waiting rooms at all times, at all hours for every ailment, and, and you could end up bankrupting the whole country because people are going for services that they don't necessarily truly need because they have no incentive to pay even a small percentage or a copay on that on that on, on that particular uh, visit. And um, I've seen it. I've seen studies where where people who are in Medicare or Medicaid end up going to the doctors a lot more, and, and sometimes for things that really aren't truly necessary.